You know, last week we started, uh, I started talking about, some of you guys were here last Wednesday, and we actually were filming from our Pomona campus. Right now our Pomona campus is alive and well, and it's open right now. We just launched our Pomona campus. Our Tijuana campus is right now, they're doing services right now as we speak. And our Kenya service, they already did services already. Um, they already did that today already. And, and But I started talking about last week about following Jesus. I, I, was, I woke up in the morning and, and, and as I was asking, what do I teach on, especially as we are launching a church? And Jesus answered me, the Holy Spirit spoke to me very clearly, and he said, just tell them to follow me. So let's look at our, our foundational scripture in Matthew 4, 19. And this is Jesus, and this is what he says. Come follow me, he said, and I'll show you how to fish for people. Now I want you to think about this. Let's say you were in the, in the days where Jesus was physically walking on earth and he came to you specifically. He picked you out of the crowd and he asked you, hey, hey, follow me. What would your response be? Would it be like some of the responses we have today? Um, yes, but not now or um, I'm too busy with, and you would say the thing that you're too busy with. I still got a lot of partying to do. There's some people I talk to when I'm sharing my faith with Jesus Christ with them. They'll say, I'm not done partying. When I'm ready to change, I'll come to Jesus. Um, there's other people that say, that say, I'm still not convinced. Or maybe someone have the guts to say this to Jesus. I'm still not convinced you're worthy of following or maybe just a plain, no, I'm not following. Now, Jesus is asking us to follow him. And I think this is more relevant than any time in the history of the world because we live in a follow me society. I want to give you some introductory statements on what I'm going to be talking about today. And one of those statements is just what I just said. We live in a follow me society. Social media has made us professional followers. We know everything about everyone. There are many, there are many that know more about social influencers than they know about their own families. It's caused us to be connected with strangers and disconnected from our own families and even God. We have no time to sit down and have family dinners. And if we do, it looks a lot like this. Look at that little toddler. He's on the phone. Do you know that this phone thing is relatively something new? Some of you guys that grew up with phones thought that this was like it's always been. Not really. When I grew up, there was no such thing as a cell phone. Only the drug dealers had big phones. <laughs> and this is how they would do it. They had a Cadillac with a pimp hat and a big phone. That's all it was. And then after that were the beepers. That they could beep you anywhere. Does anybody still have an antique beeper? And again, it was the guys in the hood that used to like, bzzz, bzzz, bzzz. How, do, how many remember the beepers? Okay, good. We got some older people here. And if you remember the beepers, you're a little older now. Right? The beepers. But and then they came out with the cell phone. Now, when they came out with the cell phone, it was a flip phone. It was a flip. Someone said it was a flip. Not that you couldn't take pictures. It was just a flip phone. Now, I remember when, when they came out with that flip phone, I got one. But I couldn't believe it worked anywhere. The first time I used the flip phone somewhere other than home, I actually used my, I got a flip phone, but I would only try it at home. Because I thought it only worked at home. It was just a replacement. I could walk around the house. I remember one time 
I call, and I just couldn't get it. For you guys that just take this for granted, you just don't get it. Like, for, like when it first came out, it was crazy. I remember I was at my brother's baseball game. Remember, me and Robert are 10 years apart. Robert's right around 8. I'm 18. I have my flip phone. And I call my mother in Florida. I go, let me try something crazy. <laughs> From coast to coast, right? So I remember putting on my, I, I call my mother and I heard her say, hello? I go, Ma, it's a miracle. I'm calling you from the baseball field right now, and somehow this phone has connected to your landline. I don't know how it did it. Because it's two different types of communication, and somehow it hooked up to your landline. How? She goes, I don't know, honey. I go, it's, it's crazy what this world's coming up with. But then it came, now it got to the point, because we used to walk around with VHS recorders. You were like the Channel 7 News. <laughs> Do you guys remember the VHS? You put those big, we go Disneyland. <laughs> Channel 7 News here, we're going to interview you. And then we used to have the CD players. So if you want to play music, you have to go on a CD player. And if you want to be portable, you have to get a portable CD player on batteries. I don't know if you guys know none about this stuff. I don't remember that. Right? And if you want to play a video, you needed a video player. And then it came to the point, and if you wanted a computer, you needed a computer. But it got to the point that the, the phone became your CD player. Your phone became your video recorder. Your phone became your computer. And you could watch movies on it. Crazy! Right? Now we're, what's happened, it's now become our means of communication, but it also has become our community. It's doing some harm because now we don't know how to connect with the very people in our own homes. We spend countless of hours on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, watching and creating content. Some of you guys want to be TikTok superstars. Practicing new dances. <laughs> Honey, do this with me. We're going to be famous. <laughs> How many of you said we're going crazy? But we're more depressed than ever. We're more disconnected than ever. We're following everyone. We live in a follow me society. In Instagram, daily users, over 1 billion daily users on Instagram connecting to complete strangers most of the time. Facebook, 2.5 billion daily users. Now, I'm going to give you some of the top 10 Instagram influencers. They call them influencers. Number 10. Anybody want to guess? Justin Bieber. You were at the first service, you little cheater. <laughs> Justin Bieber. I know this. I've been doing some research. He has around 180 million, million followers. Isn't that right, Pastor? All right, let's go. I hope she knows more than that. <laughs> number nine. Number nine top influencer, Beyonce. 189 million followers. I want you to think about this. The, the population of the United States is right around 300 and something million, and they have 189 million followers. Number eight is Lionel Messi, which is actually a soccer player. He has 224 million followers. Number seven, anybody guessing? All right? Put her picture so everybody recognizes her. Kim Kardashian. 
Now, I want to check the picture in first service because I want to make sure it's not something lustful. All right, number six. S number six. Selena Gomez. She has 249 million followers. She was Justin Bieber's girlfriend. She's more famous than him right now. You lost out, Justin. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's more famous than you. All right. Number five. Kylie Jenner. Here goes Kardashian family again. 244 million followers. 244 million followers or follow her every day. Number four, any, anybody want to guess? Front row. <laughs> Ariana Grande, 247 million followers. Number three, anybody, any guess? Dwayne Johnson. 250 million followers, star of, of WWE and world famous actor. And really number two is actually number one in the world as a human. But look at this. C Cristiano Rolando, another soccer player, the best soccer player in the world, he has over 307 million followers, almost as much as a whole population of the United States. Number two. Well, who's number one? Who has the most followers in the world? Jesus Christ. He has, check this out, he has over 2.18, not million, billion followers. Jesus is the greatest influencer in the history of the world. Since 1910, his subscriber base has gone from 600 million followers to 2.1 billion followers. It's quadrupled. Isn't that crazy? In the United States of America, check this out. 79.5% of Americans claim to be followers of Jesus Christ. I know the definition of a follower we need to look at, and that's why we're doing this series. But they claim to be followers of Jesus Christ. They were associating themselves as believers of Jesus Christ. That statement, just on a side note, should actually encourage us as believers because most of the people you're speaking to actually do believe in Jesus. They just need to be discipled. Now, the major, the other statement I want to make, I, I just made an introductory statement. We live in a follow me society. Statement number two, there are some people we shouldn't follow. Say it with me. There are some people we shouldn't follow. Following them would be a trap for you. Following them will only lead to your ruin, to pain, to heartbreak, to failure, to depression, to addiction, to prison, loss of self-worth. You could waste your whole life away, even death, or even hell. If you've ever found yourself in a lot of trouble, usually you don't get into trouble by yourself. Usually it was somebody that came into your life that you followed into that mess. If the enemy wants to ruin your life, he brings you somebody that's not worth following. Young people, before you start following everybody just to be, just to fit in, or maybe just have a boyfriend or just have a girlfriend or have some friends. Make sure you put some boundaries around you and maybe some wisdom around you and ask your family, do you think this person is a good influence for me? Because they're going to be able to see things maybe you can't see. And you say, Pastor, is that just for young people or young adults? I recommend that for everybody. Because we all have blind spots. I'm going to understand that. And if you're going to ruin your life, it's usually by someone you knew you're being introduced to that's going to take you down the wrong path. Does any, can anybody relate to that? Like I remember man, when I got into trouble and it was that guy right there. Right? So some people aren't worth following. I remember when I was in high school, I had a next door neighbor and his name was David Arenas, and 
And David was the most popular guy in the whole school. Like every girl wanted to go out with David. He was my next door neighbor. He was a great wrestler on the wrestling team, captain of the wrestling team. He had his own, he, he, had, his, he had his act together. He had a little longer hair and he would just do this. <laughs> it looked like that. And I remember he was not only like a jock and he was, all the girls liked him and, and he had it going on. He was a great student. I mean, he had everything going for him. And he was also part of that group that partied. And I remember as a young man in high school, I made a decision that I was going to follow Jesus. And they, they would invite me, all my friends and all my neighbors, they'd invite me to parties. And, and if saying yes to that party would begin my process of following them. And I knew saying yes to them would mean that I would stop following Jesus wholeheartedly. So I had some decisions to make. Yes, it would work on my popularity and I'm hanging out with those people and it seemed like they were having a lot of fun and they had all the girls around them. But I had to make a decision. Some people aren't worth following even if they give you a temporary gain. Don't get blinded by temporary gain for long-term loss. And I remember David invited me to parties and this is what I said, no. And you know what no meant? I was going to stay home with my little brother. It wasn't like I was saying no and I was going to do something more fun. You say, who's your little brother? Pastor Robert. Me and Robert are 10 years apart. So when I was 16, Robert's six. Now you got the picture. So I, I would go in the backyard, play baseball, and I train him on baseball at six years old. And that's what I would do. But there was a day that was really sad in our neighborhood. And it was the day that David Arenas went to a party and he never came back the same. In that party that David went to, this is what happened. A fight broke out. When the fight broke out, David got, he got, he, he got there in a truck. And he went into the bed of the truck, the back of the truck, and he was just tapping on the window, let's go, let's go. Because there were, I mean, there was a fight breaking on, they were rushing towards the truck. One of the people that were rushing towards the truck took a boulder and threw it through the window of where the driver was. And the driver swerved and, and, and flipped the truck and David fell out of the truck, hit his head, and now David was in a coma. David months later came out of the coma, but he was never the same. He lost his mind. He came out of it very violent. They'd have to, they would have to hide the knives at home because he was trying to kill everybody after that. David never went back to school. David never went to college. David from that point on became a person that was barely living and was headed to an insane asylum. And it was just one party, one party that he went to. All I'm saying is be careful who you're following because who you're following can lead to your demise. It could hurt you and hurt your family. Let's take inventory. Who are you following? There are some people that we shouldn't follow. In Proverbs 1.10 it says this, my child, if sinners entice you, turn your back on them. And just come follow me. We're going to have an awesome time. We're going to go rob a bank. Come on. No, no, that's a little extreme, but you never know. Right? Turn your back on them. My child, don't go along with them. Stay far away from their paths. In verse 17, Proverbs 1, 17, If a bird sees a trap being set, it knows to stay away. But these people set an ambush for themselves. They are trying to get themselves killed. What it's saying in this portion of Scripture that sometimes birds are smarter than humans. Sometimes animals are smarter than humans because they could see the danger coming. I got a dog at home. He's smart. 
he's a, he's, he's, he's a bully and he's super smart. He doesn't like to go in the water, but he needs a bath. And this dog somehow could read my mind. Like he knows when I got bath on my mind. And he runs the other way. I don't know how he knows it, but he reads my body language. What, 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 that's, what is it, Pastor, what does this mean? Is that some of us need to have bigger discernment or better discernment and realize we need to start seeing some of the people that are coming into our lives are coming to ruin us. And God said, and God's letting us know, please make sure you're listening to the spirit of God in you because some people are not worth following, even if she's pretty or he's handsome. Introductory statement number three, Jesus is the greatest influence of all time and is asking us to follow him. Who's asking us to follow him? Jesus. In Matthew 4, 19, he said, again, this is what it said, and he said to them, follow me as my disciples, accept me as your master and teacher and walk in the same path of life that I walk and I will make you fishers of men. So Jesus is saying, follow me, follow me. He's asking you to follow him, but following him comes with benefits. Someone say benefits. So why would I want to follow him? Because it leads to where you really want to go. There's things that you follow and people that you follow that might promise you, might promise you where you want to go, but they will not deliver. They'll leave you brokenhearted. They'll leave you addicted. They'll leave you hurt. They'll leave you majorly disappointed. But what are the three benefits of following Jesus? Number one. Eternal life. Someone say eternal life. There isn't anyone we can follow that can give us forgiveness of sin and eternal life. Jesus is the only source of eternal life. In John 27, it says this. John 10, 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. What does it say? Sheep hear his voice, and what do they do? They follow him. And he says... I give them eternal life, and they will not perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. In this portion of Scripture, it's describing a type of people, that they're sheep. And what do sheep do? They hear the voice of God, and they what? Follow. They hear the voice, and what? The Bible also describes there's another group, and they're called the goats. Has anybody here ever had goats? If you ever had goats, they're not like sheep. They sound the same, bah, but one's evil and one's not. Goats are evil. A matter of fact, one of the satanic symbols is this, and it represents a goat. What do goats do? They do what they want. The other thing about goats, they eat everything. Whatever you offer them, they eat. If you want to kill every plant in your neighborhood, let some goats just go wild. They will kill everything in the neighborhood. They don't listen. Now sheep, when they hear the voice of their shepherd, they come. There's no such thing as a, as a shepherd of goats because goats don't follow a shepherd. And God is saying, even in this room, there's two groups of people. There's sheep, they hear the voice of God and follow and receive eternal life. And there are those that say, I'm not going to do what anybody tells me to do. I'm going to do my thing. And you could go ahead and do that, but understand, you're not in the category that receives eternal life. So that means there's the goats and the sheep. And I pray that today, maybe there's some goats in this room, but I got some good news for you. You could be converted into a sheep that hears the voice of God and responds and receives eternal life. Now, I want to talk to you about eternal life for a minute. What is eternal life? Absolute fullness of life. Say it with me. Absolute fullness of life that starts now and lasts forever. So it's describing, if I, if I thought about what does it mean not to have eternal life, it means this, to have absolute emptiness of life. So either we have fullness of life or we have emptiness of life. I am very confident everywhere I go to talk about Jesus, and I'll tell you why. Because I know this, that everyone that does not follow Jesus, I know this, they are empty. And when we are empty, we're trying to fill our emptiness. 
We try to fill it with drugs. We try to fill it with things. Have you ever seen someone, and you've seen it on TV and things, they're rich people and they'll buy a, a Ferrari, but they don't just buy one Ferrari, they want a collection of Ferraris. Well, who needs that many Ferraris? You can only drive one at a time. And then you find out they don't even drive them because they don't want to put miles on them. And they got a whole garage of Ferraris and then they, they have a, 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 a collection of, then they go to Lamborghinis and they have all these cars. What's going on? It doesn't matter how many material things that you get without Jesus, you're still empty. You don't have fullness of life. They have a house here on the east, west coast. They have a house on the, on the east coast. They have a house in the Cayman Islands. Still empty. And you'll find out a lot of them go from one relationship to another relationship to another relationship. And you were thinking, if I married that girl, I would never divorce her. She is fine. But there's a problem. It don't matter how fine she is, how handsome he is, how much money they got. Until you experience Jesus, you're empty. And you're searching. I've never met an alcoholic. Now, in this room, in this room, there might be someone, an alcoholic, and, and, and say, Pastor, or they might think, I'm not an alcoholic. But their idea, sometimes we're alcoholics, we don't know we're alcoholics, because we start thinking this. I can stop anytime I want. And then we say this, stop now. And then we say, I don't want to right now. Next weekend. I promise I'll stop. This. But the idea is, this is the idea, is I've never met an alcoholic that says this. On a weekend after they binge and they get drunk, that they come back and say, that was the best experience I ever had. I'll never drink again because I'll never forget that high. It's amazing. <laughs> now, you might say that on Monday morning after you're throwing up and, and, and you're praying to the toilet and all the other stuff, and you got a black eye, you got in a fight with somebody you don't, you don't even know, stranger hits you, and, and you got a crashed car in the driveway, and then you say something like this, I promise, honey, I'll never do it again until what? Next Friday. And why until next Friday? Because we're empty again. And the truth is, as long as we're empty, we're going to continue searching and we're going to continue trying to fill that emptiness. And I know this, apart from Jesus, no one has fullness of life. But if you want fullness of life, completeness, you could have it. It's in one name that you could call on. It's the name of Jesus. Give God some praise that we could call on someone that could give us fullness of life. How can you be depressed and be living your dream? How can you be full of anxiety and you got all the money that you want in the bank? This is a reason we are empty apart from Jesus. How could you marry the man of your dreams and now, a few years later, you're talking about divorce? This is a reason when we're empty we continue searching. I have really, really good news. Stop searching. The Bible says this, come unto me all that are tired and worn out. Come unto me all that are hungry and thirsty and I'll give you something to drink. What he's saying is, I'm the only one that can satisfy your thirst. Fullness of life comes by knowing Jesus. So I say absolute fullness of life. That starts now and lasts forever. That's eternal life. It describes a life that is blessed in this life and for eternity. God gives his followers eternal life. What does God give? Is what? In John 5, 11, it says this. And this, and the testimony is this. God has given us eternal life. Who gives us eternal life? And this life is in his son, resulting in our spiritual completeness and eternal companionship with him. He who has the son, he who has the son by accepting him as Lord and Savior has the life that is eternal life. 
He who does not have the Son of God by personal faith does not have life, does not have eternal life. So what does this life result in? Spiritual completeness. Someone say spiritual. An eternal relationship or companionship with God. He who has the Son. Now, how do you receive this eternal life? By accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That means there has to be a decision that you make and say, Pastor, I want to be honest. I'm empty. And I've been searching from relationship to relationship, from thing to thing. I've been running. I've been hoping from hobby to hobby, from sport to sport, from job to job. And I find myself here and I'm not complete. If you're that person that have recognized I'm not complete, I'm not whole, today's your day to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Accept his forgiveness and accept the eternal life that he offers. You can have it today. And I say this, you've tried everything. How about trying Jesus? How about opening up your heart today to Jesus? He's better than anything you've ever tried. If you want fullness, completeness of life, you're only one call away. And you don't even need a cell phone to make this call. You just need to call out, Jesus, make me whole. Jesus, give me eternal life. And I want to end it with these two things. What is the second benefit? Someone say freedom. Today, I'm going to declare this. Today, someone is going to get set free. First thing, you're going to get set free from religion. Say, so what is religion? It's this thing that makes us think that if we do good enough, God will accept us. You're never going to be whole and complete serving a religion. Jesus wants to give you eternal life as a gift. He wants to forgive you right now. He wants to make you right right now. It's not something you got to earn. It's just something you got to receive, believe, and what? Receive. Someone's going to get set free today from depression. Someone's going to get set free from an addiction. Someone's going to get set free from a spirit of suicide. Someone's going to get set free from fear. Someone's going to get free, set free from a spirit of unworthiness and etc. All I'm saying is today could be your day of freedom because if you follow Jesus, you'll follow him into freedom. God does not want you to be a slave or be chained to any lifestyle. Today you can be free. Don't leave here in the chains you came in here with, leave here with the freedom that God has for you. You do not need to live under the diagnosis of a doctor. God wants you free. Anger doesn't need to rule your life. You could be free to be loving and kind. All you need is to call on Jesus. And look at this scripture, Galatians 5.1 says this. Christ has made us free to enjoy our freedom. Who's, who's made us free? So remain strong in the faith. Don't let the chains of your slavery hold you again. What he's saying is, you had chains that were holding you, and then you called on Jesus, and he set you free. But this is what he's saying. Once you get set free, don't go back into the chains. What, what, what the scripture is saying is that you could be set free from chains, but Satan will hold up the chains that you were set free from again to you and try to tempt you with the old lifestyle. Back in the hood, it's crazy. We used, I mean, some people in the hood wear some big old chains. Have you seen those chains? Like big old, like locks, like this, big old chains in the hood. And, I've, I, and, and sometimes they even act like they're gold. And we know they ain't gold. And then they complain about their necks hurting, of course, with all that chain around you. But this is what happens. They're bragging about their bondage, really. And this is what I've learned. Before you become, you go to prison, you are already were in a prison that led you to a prison. And unless you get set free from those chains, you'll always end up back in chains. 
Today, God wants to break that cycle in your life, in your family's life, in your children. And you could be set free from the chains of bondage, the chains of anger, the chains of fear, the chains of the past, the chains of unworthiness that make you think that you're not worthy. You are worthy. God loves you. And if you want freedom, you're one call away. Call on Jesus, who the Son says free is free indeed. Let's get delivered from the chains. And the last... Last benefit, someone said last benefit, which is a good one. Joy, peace, and hope. Jesus can give us emotional healing and wholeness. May today be the day they were emptied of anxiety, hopelessness, and depression and be filled with the joy, peace, and hope of Christ. There's a promise in Romans 15, 13 that says this. May the God of hope fill you with all joy. What does God want to fill you with? What? Not some joy, all joy. And peace in believing. So that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. So God wants you free. But God also wants you to have joy, peace, and hope. Today, it's available to you. All you need to do is be willing to accept Jesus and follow him. And the more you follow him, the more full your joy will be, the more peace you'll have, and the more hope you'll experience in your life. And when we're talking about joy, it's simple. This is what it means. It means calm, delight. I like that word, calm, delight. You know, to, 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 well, this week I'm going to try to use that word, calm, delight. I'm gonna, Lisa's going to ask me, how you feeling? I go, honey, I'm just feeling some calm, delight right now. She goes, what is it? I just can't explain. It's just so calm and it's so delightful. All right. Um, it also means gladness. It means happiness caused by something exceptionally good and satisfying. So the happiness caused by something good happening in your life. Jesus is that good thing that can happen in your life. After service today, I had four or five people come up to me and say, Pastor, when I came into this church, I was upset. I was angry. I was addicted. He goes, I want to thank you because hearing the messages, now I'm no longer that person. I have hope. I'm now a father. I'm now a good husband. Life has changed. Something good has happened in my life after I've heard these messages and accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. That's exactly what God does. Someone say peace. Exempts him from rage. Peace between individuals. Harmony, prosperity. That's what it means. And prosperity, because anytime there's peace and harmony, it brings, it makes things prosperous. I want you to think about this. Peace and harmony lead to prosperity. God wants to not only give you peace inside of your tranquil state within you, he also wants you to have peace in your relationships. And when we're together and we're united, this is what's going to happen. What God is saying, when you follow me, it's going to affect your relationships. Your relationships will be healthier. And when your relationships are healthier, this is what happens to you. You become more prosperous. Where there's division, there's loss. When there's unity, there's advancement. And God is saying, I just want, I don't just want to ex affect your emotions. I want to affect your relationships. You don't have a relationship problem. You have an emotional problem. And if I could fix your emotions and I could fix your self-worth, that you would know I love you and I want to give you my life and I want you to follow me because I have an abundant life for you. And if you would realize how valuable you are, this is what's going to happen. It's going to affect your relationships. Because when we're healed on the inside, it heals the outside. Stop trying to fix them. Allow God to fix you. Stop trying to get them free. How about God allowing God to set you free? This is awesome. Stop trying to get someone to make you whole. Go to Jesus. He's the only one that can make you whole. And the word hope means this. And this last thing. Expectation of good. Someone say expectation of good. For the expectation. Now, when we say expect good, why do we expect good? Because when God is leading your life, all things will work out for good. You could have some hope in your life because when you're not serving God, you're always waiting for the, it's like for the hammer to drop. Like it's going to, it's ready to go bad. I don't know when, but it's going to go bad. Because when you're living under the, the guilt and the shame, the condemnation, you start running and no one's chasing you. 
I heard a story about a guy that the police came to his neighborhood and they had a, they had like 20 cars that came into his neighborhood and he woke up out of sleep and he just started running and the police started chasing him. Um, I mean, he just started running over fences. I mean, he, 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 he started running. He broke one of his legs. They finally caught him and they caught up to him. And then the police asked him, why were you running? They weren't even there for him. They were there for somebody else in his apartment complex. But this idea when, when you have no peace within yourself, you start running and you're full of anxiety because you think something is going to catch up with you. And this is all God is saying, stop running. God is saying, I've already caught up with everything you've ever done. Allow me. I paid the price. Let me forgive you. Let me show you my mercy. Let me give you a new life. Today's your day to stop running and start running to God. So this is the thing. You can follow Whoever you want to follow, follow yourself and follow every one of those famous people. Or maybe you have your own people you follow in your life. Or you can follow Jesus. And if you follow Jesus, this video will give you absolute fullness of life. That starts now and it can last forever. If you follow Jesus, it's not going to lead you to chains. The chains are going to fall off. And you could be free today. You could be free from whatever you think has been holding you back. It's like, man, there's something holding me back. You could be free from that. Receive your freedom today. It might be something mental you need to be free from. Emotional you need to be free from. It could just be something physical. Like, I just can't stop doing this. Today is your day of freedom. Jesus is not here to judge you. He's here to offer you a new option. He said, you followed everything. Is what he's saying. Follow me. And you know what I'm doing right now is I'm just giving you an offer like Jesus made with his disciples. Come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. What I'm doing is just continuing that same old offer that Jesus made over 2,000 years ago that transformed those 12 disciples' lives forever and they changed the world. This moment could be your world-changing experience. On the 4th of July, just think about this. This was the day I was set free. On 4th of July, this was the day I was emotionally healed. On 4th of July was the day I received eternal life. The fullness of life that only God has. You could be a believer in this place and maybe I'm a believer. Say, Pastor, I'm a believer but I've not experienced the fullness of life. Maybe you haven't. There's a reason. Because you didn't know. Because you receive joy, peace. And hope by believing. Someone say believe. Today's your day. You might say, Pastor, I've heard it all. That's a great motivational speech. But I really don't believe I can receive that from me. And this is what I'll tell you. Let go of that doubt. And just, just use the little faith that brought you in this room to get your breakthrough today. You need a breakthrough. But your breakthrough is going to affect your family. It's going to affect your kids. And either you're going to pass on change to your next generation slavery or you're going to pass on freedom to the next generation get your breakthrough today and then spread the breakthrough to your family let's all stand up let's give the lord a big hand he's a good god you guys have been a great audience on fourth of july so what are the benefits number one eternal life i'm going to pray and i don't want anybody to leave yet because i'm going to dismiss in just a second but I want to I wanna just say this, that I told you guys this Wednesday that um, me and Lisa, I mean, we were really close to both of us dying this week, or last week. And we were on the freeway on the 210 when a car came toward us on the 210 freeway, like 70 miles per hour. And he passed by my car, I would say maybe two feet. I was going probably 80, he was going like 70. So it had been 150 mile per hour impact. Um, we have a police officer that goes here and I ask him, I, I go, Will, if, 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 the, if we had a head on collision because I couldn't move, there was nothing I could do. When I saw him coming, there's nothing I could do. He's coming so fast, I, I couldn't change lanes, I couldn't swerve, there's nothing I could do. He was on me within seconds. 
And I asked, I asked Will, I go, Will, if, if I would have got hit, head-on collision, would me and Lisa be alive today? And he told me, probably not. He goes, what would kill you is not the metal of the cars. What would kill you is a sudden stop. That your internal organs would dislodge, your heart valves would be disconnected, and you would have internal bleeding. Because that's what would kill you. So you pro you, it'd be a miracle if you did survive. But he goes, no, you wouldn't survive. Well, I remember when, when that happened last week, I just thought about how quick life can go. And I would have died. At least me and Lisa would have been on a freeway, gone into eternity. But I received Jesus and I would have eternal life. And I'd be with him, blessed now and blessed for eternity. But I thought about what happened five cars behind me. Five cars behind me, the guy that was coming against the flow of traffic at 70 miles per hour decided to cut into the lane and hit a Tesla head-on collision. And both cars just burst into flames. Both drivers died instantly. And then I thought about how important eternal life is and those that have received Jesus have eternal life and those that have not received Jesus do not have eternal life and now the rubber met the road at that moment because I'm thinking about these two people that are going to into eternity were they offered this when Jesus came to them and he said follow me did they ever accept it? We know the driver was driving because he was committed suicide. And we could see his state of mind. But the innocent person that was driving on the fast lane, going to Yakaipa's home, he's 44 years old. He died on his way home. His family will never see him again. He's gone to eternity. And I just pray that he didn't play Russian roulette with his life. And hear a message like this and just... Ah, well, because I love you. And I, I'll tell you this. As I'm preaching, I'm fighting for your soul. I don't know how many times you're going to hear a message like this, but it's the most important message you'll ever hear in your life because you're talking about where you're going to spend eternity. And what does eternity offer? Eternal life or eternal death? What's eternal death? That you, This is what it means. You'll be separated from God and every blessing forever and ever and ever. You know, in this life, you could be going through a bad day, but you still have hope. You can pray. You could hope for a better day. But once you go into eternity, it's done. I've heard people that I've talked to, and they said, Pastor, I'm not ready to receive Jesus. I want to do my thing. And plus, if I do go to hell, me and my friends will just party in hell. Well, the reality is there's going to be no party in hell. There's going to be no friends in hell. There's going to be no hope in hell. There's going to be no church in hell. There's going to be no family in hell. You'll be separated from God and everything good forever. And the Bible describes it as a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping because of great regret, regret and gnashing of teeth. You're grinding your teeth just thinking, why did I not receive Jesus? He offered me eternal life to set me free from eternal death and I ignored him. For a temporary pleasure. He offered me freedom. He offered me hope, joy, everything I was looking for, I could have had, and I missed it. It's reality. Your eternity could come like that. You get hit in a car accident like that, there is no thoughts. It's over. Boom, boom, eternity. And we've had members of our church that's happened. But I thank God the members of our church receive Jesus and we'll see them on the other side forever. That's good. Bless now, bless there. But we've also had people that have ignored moments like this. And they went on to eternity, died, lost forever and ever. This is what God is saying. I've come to give you eternal life. Follow me. I'll give you the fullness that you're looking for. 
I'll set you free. You know what you do? You come with your chains. You come with your addictions. You come with your pain. You come with your doubt. You come, exa- come with your failures. God is not here to judge you. He's here to save you. He's here to make you whole. He's here to make you complete. I'm going to count to three. Say, Pastor, that's me. I want to receive eternal life. I want to make a decision to follow Jesus. When I count to three, I pray you do what the disciples did. You know what they did? They immediately dropped everything and they followed him. It wasn't a long conversation or speech like this. It was just a statement, come follow me. If you feel like God's talking to your heart, say, you know what? I don't think I could do it, but I want to come the way you are. He's going to give you the ability to do it. No one here could do it. I can't do it. But with God and his spirit, you can do it. He's the one that's going to set you free. He's the one that's going to save you. He's the one that's going to heal your broken heart. He's the one that's going to give you a new life. Just come with your pain. Come with your broken relationship. Come with your hurt. This is your moment. Fourth of July can be your day of independence. It can be your day. When I got to three, say, Pastor, that's me. I want a new start. I want a new beginning. I don't know if I were to die right now. I go to heaven. And I know that there's an emptiness in my heart that I tried to fill with so many things. I'm tired of going around the circles. I'm tired of the anger. I'm tired of just going, trying to fill this emptiness. I'm tired of the drinking. I'm tired of the drugs. I'm tired of, I'm tired of being unfaithful to my wife and my kids and every, I'm just tired. I need a new beginning. I'm tired of, I'm tired of being an alcoholic. I want to be free. I'm tired of the depression. I'm tired of the anxiety. I'm just tired. I need a break today. I need a, be, I need a new beginning. I need eternal life. When I count to three, raise your hands all this building. Don't be ashamed. God's not ashamed of you. One, it's your day. Just to say, follow me. When you raise your hand, you know what you're saying? Yes, I'm going to follow you. Two, when I say three, raise your hands to all those buildings. One, two, three, raise your hands to all those buildings saying, that's me. I see the hand, honey. I see that hand over there. I see the hand. I see the hand way in the back. Proud of you. I see the hand there. I'm proud of you guys. I see those hands over there. I see the hand way in the back. This is your moment. I see the hand over there. I want those that raise their hands, will you do me a big favor? I just want to pray with you. Will you give me the honor of praying with you? I want you to leave your seat. If you raise your hand, just come up here real quick. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray together. We're going to start over our lives together. We're going to receive everything that God has for us. If you raise your hand, just come forward real quick. This is your day. Let's give them a hand as they're coming forward. Ask your neighbor, you want to go up there or go through with you? suicide. Come on, someone's going to live. Someone's going to be loving. Someone's going to change. Is there more? Come on, we're fighting for souls, all service. We're fighting. Church, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. We're going to pray. Over there. I got some more over here. Now, we're going to pray right now. And church, 4th of July is all about this. Come on. When it's all said and done. Someone claiming their freedom in Christ. You don't have to earn this. I'm going to take the weight off of you. There's nothing you can do for God to love you more than he loves you now. Okay? He loves you. you. Say, Pastor, but you don't know the things that I've done. He knows the things that you've done. And while you were doing them, 
he decided to die on a cross for you. So you'll never, ever doubt how much he loves you. I didn't die for you because you were doing right. I died for you because you're a sinner. And I took on your sin so that you could be forgiven. That's how much I love you. And this is the decision that you're making today. I want to be free. I want eternal life. And I want to follow Jesus the rest of my life. Some say follow. You're not just going to follow him as a fan like you would Justin Bieber. You're going to follow him as a son, as a daughter, as a disciple of Jesus. Some say disciple. That means I'm going to follow him, learn his ways. I'm going to go to the classes. The word disciple means student. How can you be a student if you don't even go to class? So on Sunday we got class, and on Tuesday we got class. I'm going to be a class. And this Tuesday, we're going to start starting at the way. I'd love to see you there. Take your next step. Someone say next step. Don't just sign up for college. Go to class. Well, I'm, I'm registered. Who cares? Do you go to class? Right? We're going to, someone say, follow Jesus. I'm a disciple. Okay. And the more you follow him, the more you learn, the more you grow, the more peace you have, the more joy you have, the more hope you'll have. You understand that? Because your belief grows. Someone say belief. You're walking greater freedom. You're beginning at a level of freedom, a level of joy, a level of peace, but it could increase. Someone say increase. How does it increase? Through your faith, through your knowledge of Jesus, getting to know Jesus better, and that's going to take some effort, okay? Let's bow your heads, close your eyes, and we're going to repeat a prayer that's going to change your world and set you free. Say, Jesus, I believe that you're calling me to follow you. I've made a decision today that I'll follow you for the rest of my life. Set me free from all addiction, from all bad habits. Heal my emotions. I let go of all the depression, the anxiety, the anger, the hate, the unforgiveness. I forgive everybody that has hurt me. I'm starting over today. I receive forgiveness, and I give forgiveness. Holy Spirit, come into my life and fill me with joy, with peace, and hope, and love. I receive the free gift of eternal life. I am now complete, whole. I belong to you, Jesus. Help me, Lord, to share this with others. What you've done for me, I want to see done in others. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Lord, I just thank you for this miracle day. Father, everyone here saved, born again, free, and full of your spirit. I want everybody to stay here. I want to make sure we get everybody's information. Make sure we pray with you. We need some more workers up here. We got another line that needs help. God bless you. Happy 4th of July. Enjoy some hot dogs out there and, and chips or whatever they have out there. God bless you. We love you. Remember, go out there and live the life for Jesus Christ. Follow him. And you'll follow him into the dreams you've always wanted. He'll lead you to eternity. He'll lead you now. God bless you. We love you. If you need prayer coming up, we'd love to pray with you.